The next thing that we will explore in the uh, Jack language specification is the notion of classes. Now, uh, the class is the most fundamental and basic uh, compilation unit in uh, the Jack language, likewise in uh, Java, C Sharp, C++. Uh, each class uh, named uh, foo is stored in a separate uh, Jack file, and uh, this file is compiled separately from uh, all the other class files uh, in, uh, in your application. And uh, we require that the class name uh, will be the same as the file name, and we also require that uh, the first character in the class name and the file name will be an uppercase uh, uh, letter. Now, here is the uh, general uh, skeleton of, uh, of a class in, uh, in Jack. It begins with a class name. And then we have uh, field variable uh, declarations, uh, which are optional, but uh, if we have them, they will appear uh, here. Then we have uh, another set of uh, zero or more uh, static variable uh, declarations. And finally, uh, we'll have uh, what I call the um, subroutine declarations. And by subroutine, I refer to constructors, methods, and functions. So they should appear at the end of uh, the class uh, declaration, and typically they capture uh, you know, the bulk of, uh, of the class uh, contents. However, uh, we have this uh, syntactic requirement that uh, field and static variables, if they exist in the class, uh, must appear before the uh, subroutine declarations. Okay, what I'd like to do next is um, uh, take a, a bit of a diversion and talk a little bit about uh, the semantics of classes and uh, uh, to which purposes do we, do we use classes uh, to begin with. Well, we use them for numerous different uh, purposes and there are courses on uh, software architecture and uh, software engineering that describe uh, what is known as design patterns of uh, classes and uh, different purposes and uh, morphologies of classes. But uh, in my view, there are two main uh, sort of categories of classes, at least that's how I think about it. Uh, there are classes that provide functionality, and a good example of these classes is the, uh, uh, our OS uh, math class, which as you see, you see the API here, is just a, a library of uh, commonly used mathematical functions. And anyone you know, can use these functions at will. And uh, the library provides uh, the implementation, hopefully provides an efficient implementation of these uh, uh, functions. And uh, what is special about you know, these kinds of classes is that they contain functions only. There are no fields, no constructors, uh, uh, no methods, and obviously there are no objects, and uh, therefore uh, this class and similar classes are essentially libraries of, uh, or uh, modules containing uh, uh, functions. So that's you know, one sort of mega category of, uh, of classes, and then the other mega category which in, within which there are many more subcategories are uh, classes that represent uh, uh, what uh, we sometimes call entities or objects. And uh, examples of these classes uh, that we saw already are fraction, list, uh, string. Every one of these classes is designed to represent instances of the class, right? Objects that uh, uh, are created and manipulated according to uh, the class uh, uh, capabilities. And uh, in Jack, if a class has at least one method, you know, one or more methods, then it is bound to be a class that uh, represents an entity. And uh, typically, such a class will also uh, contain fields and, and methods uh, to represent the data of uh, the entities and the operations that are uh, 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 allowable uh, on these entities. And finally, classes that uh, represent entities or objects can also have uh, functions. But uh, if the programmer knows what he or she is doing, uh, then these functions should better serve only for internal helper purposes. You know, these are sometimes called in Java, I think, uh, private static methods. So for example, if you write a method that operates on an object, and in the process of doing so, you have to do some 
long uh, and complex uh, computation that repeats itself in several other methods, you may want to uh, factor this uh, computation outside to, uh, to another uh, uh, to a function that resides in the class and only other subroutines in the class uh, uh, use it. So that's uh, perfectly okay. You can create such uh, helper uh, functions for uh, internal purposes. However, as a general advice that has uh, nothing to do with this course, you should uh, remember uh, not to expose these uh, helper functions to uh, the rest of the world, to other uh, classes uh, outside your, uh, uh, your particular um, uh, class that is designed to uh, represent objects. If you do want to create some functionality uh, that is not related to uh, objects of this class and may help uh, other clients as well, you should take these uh, uh, functions and put them elsewhere. You should put them in separate classes, not, not in, in, in this one. So uh, the general advice is not to mix library functionality with object representation functionality in the same class. You should separate them. And uh, once again, you know, these are general uh, software engineering uh, propositions which uh, are not directly related to this course. And um, in order to illustrate this uh, principle, I will show you an example that actually violates it. And this example is the uh, fraction class that we saw earlier in the course. If you look at this class, you will see in this slide here we have a constructor, a method called reduce, and a function called uh, gcd. And the method does uh, what I just described. It uh, computes the uh, great common uh, uh, divisor, divisor of uh, two numbers, uh, which happen to be the numerator and the denominator, and then it uses the result for some purpose. Now, what's wrong with it? Well, first of all, in terms of syntax and uh, uh, Jack's uh, uh, sanity and so on, everything is just fine. The compiler will happily translate this program and it will work perfectly. But from uh, an aesthetics uh, design uh, and practical matters, uh, this is a bad solution because GCD is a very general function and it has know, lots of things to offer outside the context of fractions. In other words, other classes that do all sorts of other things, uh, for instance, with prime numbers, uh, would uh, benefit from being able to access this uh, GCD uh, function. And therefore, it makes perfect sense to refactor this uh, GCD code and put it in a separate class. And this class may well be the math class of our operating system or your own uh, math uh, class, uh, which is a library of mathematical uh, functions. So here's an example of you know two classes that uh, uh, are exactly the classes I described before. Uh, fraction represents an object, and math is a library of mathematical operations, GCD being one of them. So this is a much better solution. Uh, it has uh, you know many good benefits. One of them is that. The fraction class will be uh, tighter and more uh, focused, more to the point. It will deal only with fractions and nothing else. And um, the math class is now extended or uh, 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 with additional functionality. And now many other clients can uh, use uh, the GCD function, which before was buried within this uh, uh, fraction class. So uh, what you see here is that uh, how should I put it? Well, uh, object-oriented languages are incredibly powerful, and uh, they have uh, uh, lots of uh, expressive power. And in the wrong hands of programmers who are not well trained, they can lead to monstrous programs, which are impossible to extend and uh, maintain. And uh, you know, and these are programmers who don't follow these. Uh, uh, best uh, practice uh, uh, advices. So, you know, all of this really has nothing to do with NAND to Tetris. This was just uh, a commercial designed to uh, 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 advise you 
that uh, if you want to be a serious developer, you have to take some uh, software architecture courses, uh, or at least one course, uh, or software design, design patterns, something like this, that will teach you how to design software uh, correctly. All right, um, moving along, a Jack application, as we explained uh, before in the course, is uh, a collection of one or more uh, Jack classes, hopefully well designed, one of which must be named uh, main. Uh, this class should have at least one function named main, and main.main .main becomes the entry point of the entire application. I'm repeating this here for just for completeness because uh, we discussed this uh, before. And finally, I want to say a few words about the support library that comes uh, with Jack, uh, which is similar to the support library that comes uh, uh, with Java, at least uh, in principle. And uh, here's the very same uh, uh, code example that we used uh, all along. And if I look carefully at this code, I see that it has many calls to uh, OS uh, routines. And this is very natural in, uh, in uh, Jack as well as in other uh, high-level object-oriented languages that work tightly with some uh, operating system uh, layer that uh, surrounds them. Now, the purpose of the operating system is uh, versatile. First of all, it is designed to close various gaps between high-level programming and uh, the host hardware and peripheral devices like you know, the keyboard, the screen, the mouse, the uh, scanner, uh, the printer, uh, the camera, the microphone, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and indeed, you see in this uh, code example here that if you want to read something from the keyboard, you have an OS routine that does it, key keyboard.readint. And believe me, that writing this routine is a pain because you have to get into the keyboard and uh, read the scan keys and uh, uh, turn, uh, you know, uh, uh, clicking on keys to uh, integers and strings and so on. And uh, you will discover that uh, this is not simple when we develop the operating system uh, towards the end of the course. But uh, once again, I promise that we will do it in the, the most uh, elegant way uh, possible, so it won't be that uh, terrible. But, you know, as far as the uh, high-level programmer is concerned, you know, he or she could not care less about all these uh, gory details because the OS delivers this abstraction uh, nicely and elegantly. Uh, another purpose of the OS is to provide efficient implementation of widely used uh, functions like uh, square root, for example. Uh, and uh, finally, we also want the operating system to uh, represent efficiently uh, commonly used uh, abstract data types like array, string, uh, uh, list and, uh, and so on. In terms of uh, implementation, the uh, OS that uh, accompanies Jack consists of eight classes. We'll see them in the next uh, slide. And uh, once again, the whole concept is similar in spirit, I emphasize in spirit, to the uh, Java's uh, standard uh, class library. And uh, you know, the only difference between our class library and Java's class library is that our library contains uh, eight classes and the Java's standard class library, as of Java 8, contains, I think, more than 4,000 classes. Um, and, uh, and that's because Java is an industrial strength language, so you have to support, you know, so many things like uh, networking and files and encryption and... Uh, compression and uh, uh, multi-threading and, you know, numerous other things. And, of course, we could have done the same with Jack, but uh, we didn't have to because it's not in the scope of the course. Uh, but they are similar in the sense that, you know, the Jack standard library is wide open and we can extend it uh, any way we want. And we may do it in some uh, advanced courses if we ever have the energy to, uh, uh, to build them. So, uh, as promised, uh, here is a description of the eight um, OS classes uh, that uh, support uh, Jack. And if you want to read uh, the complete uh, OS API, you're welcome to look at uh, the Nantu Tetris book and uh, website, and uh, uh, the API is available there. Uh, so, with that, we are done with this unit, and in the next unit, we'll uh, complete the specification of the Jack language 
when we discuss methods.